Everyone, hi. Bruce Moffson, LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada, coming to you with another video breakdown. Uh, we got tons of requests and listeners asking to please break down Mac Miller's latest album that he released after his death. And we heard you, we listened to you, and again and again and again, I'm just learning just how powerful his music was, his message was, and how he resonated so well with his fans. Okay. The name of the album, well, let me back up a second. He passed away on September 7th, 2018, but he was well into the recording session of what this album was going to be called, Circles, and it was meant to be a companion album to what he released in 2018 called Swimming. The idea was Swimming in Circles. That was the idea that both were going to work off each other, and um, the concept, that's how the concept came about. Now, of course, he passed away. Now, the family on January, yes, 8th, 2020, released a statement on Instagram that they would be dropped, that they would be, you know, putting it, not they, but that his album would be coming out. And Warner Brothers on January 17th, 2020, released the album. Before we begin, I just want to give a shout out to his producer, John Breon. I saw him in an interview where he had a huge impact on how the album was arranged with guitars and synthesizers and all kinds of different kind of instruments, really brilliant, uh, cymbals, uh, vibraphone on track one was really brilliant, how the guitar was used. So you really see what it's like to have a, a really quality producer to work with you in producing great music. Now the song we picked, the song that I liked right away was Circles, hence the name of the album, but the first song. So what I'm going to do is like I've done before is go over certain lyrics that I found appealing break them down clinically, and then I want to talk about a little further about the message that Mac in inadvertently is trying to give to his fans from the music that he did. Before we began, the album is brilliant, the album is great, no issues, no arguments, uh, truly a masterpiece. So here we go. Um, this is, well, he goes, well, this is what it looks like right before you fall. And that goes off right off to me, that sense of being aimless, that sense of being rootless and filled with confusion and doubt uh, not being sure of yourself of well, who you are and what you've turned into. Okay, then it goes the next two lines. Stumbling around, you've been guessing your direction. Next step, you can't see it all. Okay, not centered, not focused, okay? Um, aimless, it's like you're walking in the dark. And a lot of times when I do clinical work with people, that's really what tends to happen. You're just, you're not sure of yourself. You're not sure where you're going, okay? And I don't have a name. I don't have a name, no. Who am I to blame? Who am I to blame, though? So I took it this a different way. I think people, some people were, you know, looking at it as like when it says, who am I to blame? Who am I to blame? Like blaming somebody. I took it as who am I? Who am I to blame? He's referencing himself. He's, ta you know, he's taking, again, all the credit, both good and bad. And it goes like this, because I don't have a clue who I am anymore. He's referring to himself and his own mistakes. Who am I to blame, though? Like, I am the guy. I'm the person that's created the situation that I find myself in. Um, and I cannot be changed. I cannot be changed, no. Trust me, I tried. You know, he's referring to himself and his own mistakes, and there's a feeling of being locked in. I have heard this multiple times, that I can't get, you know, my past. I can't get past my past. My past, you know, my past life, I can't move forward. I'm running in circles, that great metaphor. And I hear that a lot of times that people say, like, I can't move forward. I can't go on. You know, I tried, I tried, I tried, you know, like I'm stuck. And that's something you hear a lot in clinical thinking. Like, I, you know, literally, like right in front of me, I literally can't see my own hands. I'm literally flying blind. And I just end up right at the start of the line drawing circles. You know, I can't get started. I can't move forward. I'm running in circles. Again, that great metaphor. Drawing in circles. Circles. Like your hamster on a wheel. The faster you run, the faster you do it, it's getting exhausted. You're not making any progress. Okay. Then he goes further down. Don't you put any more stress on yourself. It's one day at a time. I got that he was talking about himself again. Don't put any more stress on yourself, Mac. Like, what have you accomplished all that stress? What have you achieved? Zero. You know, we do that so often to ourselves. We stress, we stress, we stress, we stress. I'll give an example today. I spoke with my producer last night, and we normally meet at the library. 
where we shoot you know the, almost every one of our videos except for the live streams. And guess what? Today in Las Vegas, they announced all the libraries are closed indefinitely. So we were supposed to meet. I, I call ahead of time to reserve a room. We go there, blah, blah, blah. Um, because you can see we're using a board here. Um, and the board is usually a lot bigger behind me. What did I do? I called them. I, I shot them a text. I said, hey, letting you know that we're not going to have the library today. I said, can I come to your house? He says, yeah, like you want to make it like three because we're going to meet the library at three. I said, can I make it like 5.15, 5.30? He says, yeah, no problem. He gives me his thumbs up. So today was a crazy day for me in a lot of different areas. You can imagine what's going on around the country, around the world affects me to a certain extent. And um, as I was leaving, later on I wanted to, what did I do? I shot him a text. That's it. I'm on my way. So he knows. And then when I got here, I think I shot another text like I'm here, came into the house, I'm ready to rock, no problem. But taking care of something like you don't need extra. I have enough stress already in my life. I don't need more. But you do these small little things, and that's what you try to learn is to get rid of the stress. So I believe Mac was really talking about himself to himself, like don't stress out. Like what have you accomplished? All your worries, what's happened? And it's getting pretty late, getting pretty late. Yeah, in my own life is what he's referring to. And then finally the song ends with, it goes around like the hands that keep counting the time, drawing circles. I took that as a clock reference, you know, the circles and a clock, you know, the hands going faster and faster. You know, our audience, we're, we've learned from, you know, analytics is you guys tend to be 18 to 34 years old. You're still, most of you, majority are still fairly young. Enjoy it. One of the issues about getting older is that time goes by quicker and quicker. Like you don't realize like quick, quick, quick how things move on. Like 10 years go by, 15 years go by, 20 years go by. And you begin to wonder, where did it all go? Like all this time, what did I accomplish? And you start to take stock of your life. Like what did I really achieve in my life, both good and bad? And I think Mac lived a very like hyper life in that sense, that he was looking at him life in that sense of like, what did I really accomplish? Where am I at? I, 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 who am I? Now, what struck me what, what, of watching this video was how he gave the impression of detachment. Once again, if you, I mean, because everyone's watched the video, he's on top of an eagle, but there's no color in it. And he's just like this with his eyes downward, eyes closed, wearing a pair of jeans, ripped jeans, and he's just sailing through life, almost like space. All alone, eyes downward, not moving at all. He's like a Buddha. And he's flying in a sense blind with no direction seemingly intended. And he did that in, in uh, swimming as well. And he did this so well when he bridged swimming in circles. Even the cover picture of him, when you see him in the album, you know, you're looking at it, it's, it's being unclear. You don't really get a sense of Mac Miller and with different perspectives, like the face is here, here, and here, it just goes all over like three different three different locations. And again, it's his eyes closed, hands covering his face. Very telling to me what he's saying in a nonverbal perspective. And notice also that he's flying to me on the wings of an eagle, the most powerful bird symbolically in the world, on wings of eagles. You see that reference a million times in in Judaism, on the wings of eagles. You know, you hear references in, in poetry, in, in music, on the wings of eagles, because it's symbolic. You're flying on the, the animal that flies the high, or not animal, the bird that literally flies the highest in the world. Everyone flies beneath an eagle. They own the skies. And that's who he's flying with, just flying. And then you get a sense that the eagle is more in control of the situation than Mac is. He's just like a passenger. And what he was showing me is how he stripped everything down, black and white, no color, okay, no bling, no money, no girls, guys around him, just himself, no tux, just a hoodie and torn jeans. Like, this is who I am in essence, okay? And notice the mood that he sets with that opening music due to his producer, but very soft and melodic, you know, very, very easy to kind of walk into, like you slide into the song. And I think he's going back to his jazz roots once again, that he had a, he had a very, very good career as a jazz musician in general, but it slides you in. It, 
like it just brings it takes you by the hand and brings you in you can truly see the influence of that producer and how it was arranged and the use of the brush and the symbol and the vibraphone now the reaction to this album has been almost universal acclaim everyone is saying the same thing masterpiece great um, but also there are commenters and even the commentators and even the people breaking down the album, people who were commenting from people doing the breakdown was sadness, shock, nonstop crying. He changed my life. He, he, he saved me. I was following him for 10 years. I've been through what he's been through. I related to him. He was relatable. That word came up a lot, the relatability of Mac Miller. And what so many people said is that he was so open with his fans about talking about himself via his lyrics, which he did beautifully and brilliantly. Okay, and as one commenter said, Jeff Walcott, this is an actual line from G-O double dash, you know, from God A-M, good A-M. To everyone who sells me drugs, don't mix it with that BS. I'm hoping not to join the 27 Club. And he was like, my God, the guy was so real and so instinct and so on it. Okay, now... We all know that Mac Miller died of an overdose of cocaine and fentanyl. And he talked openly about his struggles with substance abuse. And the commentator kicked the moon said, this is from a different uh, breakdown. I really like what this person said. Let's all decide to use his passing as a reason to pursue our dreams. You get one life, use it. Okay. The reason why I think clinically he was so powerful with his fans is, and he because he related so well because he talked about his warts and his blemishes most artists don't have the confidence to do that he did even as a clinician I can tell you that we're, we're taught don't share with anything don't share with people about your personal life or your own issues or your own thoughts like that's taboo you got to have boundaries what Mac Miller did through his lyrics was he broke the fourth wall and what I do when I do clinical work I break that fourth wall all the time because if you're not real to people and tell them how you made mistakes, have you done things the wrong way? They don't see you as a real person, they see you as a cardboard figure. Okay. And I read the comments, a lot of comments on him about his drug usage, they didn't mean to die, but that his lyrics were a precursor, that he had another control. Here are my thoughts. Why even start in the first place? That's it. Why even start? As Kick said, you only have one life live that life in a productive way so that you get the most out of it and if you need help don't be afraid to ask okay and for those around you if you see anybody that's struggling if it seems odd we're off then step up and say to somebody are you okay are you doing okay you know don't be afraid and do you need help you can literally put color back to someone's face i.e that video all right, that needs it more than you might ever think. You know, and that's the point about so many issues that we work with clinically is that everyone's afraid. Everyone's afraid. Don't say anything. You see the train wreck starting in a slow motion. It has to go forward a few inches. Step up. Say something. Don't let the person struggle alone. And that's, if I think Mac understood that, if he realized just how powerful he was with so many people, what he's given them, that's the best way to honor him. Now, right now, obviously, the coronavirus is a huge issue around the world. And often people are going to do things that are going to be wrong or even cruel. Okay? And they do that when they're frightened and scared. Rise above that. Be a leader. Show kindness and caring even with small issues, and let others realize they are not alone, okay? If looking at the legacy of Mac and realizing how much he literally influenced millions of his fans around the world is the best tribute and respect that you can give him by being a force positive. I've always said that, that people who, who commit suicide or do it accidentally or just die premature they often don't realize what a void they leave behind when they pass away. Had he known that, he would have changed his whole thinking. I truly believe that. You can do the same thing. Right now, a lot of issues around the world making people very nervous and anxious. 
be a force positive. And what I'm asking for is when you people write back and comment, tell me what you're doing right now to put things on an even keel, by giving people a voice of reason, by showing concern, by showing empathy. How do you act in a grocery store and people are fighting over a bottle of you know, sanitizer? What are you doing? What are you doing for someone who's elderly, who's a shut-in? What are you doing to make people feel like you're not alone, you're not abandoned? Honor Mac that way and get something out of his passing and realize you can be your own influencer just the way Mac was to so many of his fans. Thanks for watching. We're good.